Now let's move on to the delayed choice experiment, first thought out by physicist John Wheeler. This is one of the most interesting and frankly baffling examples of quantum observer participancy, which is a broad concept that all the examples in this video fall under. To put it simply and most interestingly, a delayed choice experiment is an experiment that allows you to control something that's already happened in the past. I did not set up my interferometer to perform a delayed choice experiment, but I will discuss in theory how one could be constructed. Let's look at the so-called double slit experiment. This is actually quite similar to my interferometer. A light source in region 1 emits particles one at a time. Let's for example say it emits 14 light particles. After being admitted, these particles reach region 2, the double slit. Classically, they should follow a very simple straight path, either going through the left or the right slit. But we now know that that does not happen. The 14 particles will land on the screen placed at the end of region 3 in a wavy interference pattern. There is a way to get the particles to go through only one slit and to follow the classical path. That is, we watch them. If we place cameras at the end of region 3, pointed at the two slits, we will force the particles to go through only one slit. But what we learned earlier in this video, watching the slit means there will be no interference pattern. So the 14 light particles will arrive with about half going to each detector. This is the equivalent of the laser beam making two green spots in my experiment. It's what happens when there's no interference. With those two possibilities covered, we can now think about the delayed choice experiment. First, we need to imagine that region 3 is huge. We need to imagine it's so large that it takes the 14 light particles after they left region 2, hours, even days, to make it to the end of region 3. Then, after all 14 light particles have left region 2, we decide if we want to place at the end of region 3 a screen or the cameras. If we use the cameras, that means that the hours or days ago, at region 2, the particles went through one slit or the other. We'll know this because we'll actually see the particle going through the slit. Or, if we choose to use a screen, then we'll get an interference pattern. The particles will act as though hours or days ago, they went through both slits. The main idea is this. By later choosing which way to look at the light particles at the end of region 3, we control what happened in the past at region 2. We control whether the light particles go through one slit only, or behave as though they went through both slits. This experiment can be done with light particles, electrons, whole atoms, molecules, or even larger objects. Although the difficulty rises greatly as the particle size increases. This is an just theory. A delayed choice experiment has been performed successfully by a team in 2007. So what did we learn? That in a limited and specific way, we can control the outcome of events that occurred in the past. Quantum observer participancy research, which my experiment falls under, so far has not been very productive in terms of technological advances. But there is one interesting example. This example was quantum cryptography. It's basically a way of sending messages to another party with a guarantee based on the laws of physics, not the skill of the sender, that any eavesdropping, any whatsoever, will be detected and therefore can be avoided. How does quantum cryptography work? The details are available on the internet, so I'll only go to a quick explanation here. The idea is that if someone is trying to eavesdrop on your encrypted message, they are essentially taking a measurement. As you learned in this video, measurements change how particles behave. So if you and who you're communicating with notice a change in the particle's behavior, you'll know that someone is listening in on your message. Then you change to a new encrypted channel. I hope you've been inspired by my video. First, I'd like to thank Shane and Anjan, who are fellow students and good friends of mine. These papers, articles, and websites, which are just a few of many that inspired me. And finally, the University of Michigan Flint physics faculty and staff.